I want to talk about something in this episode that I'm super passionate about, and that's colour and how it can massively improve your landscape photography. If you just understand the colour wheel and understand how to use colour in your photos. So I'm going to go through some of the photos that I think do this really well of mine and talk about how you can use Lightroom to just tweak things and it can really step up the quality of the images that you produce. Good morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So this episode all got started by this photo here. So this is a photo that you'll have seen in the last but one video um, that I talked about. Uh, I didn't do any video footage taking it, but it was one of the favorite shots that I've, I took over the summer. And I, I, I spoke about editing it and, and whether you wanted to see how I edit, edited it. And I was just gonna do an editing video, but then I realized that a lot of my photos, I was having a look at them, have this sort of painterly look. And then when I really looked into it, I realized that a lot of them don't have a huge color palette. So I was, I, I was looking at it, I was looking at the color wheel and, and tried to understand, because I often um, have the color wheel on my phone and when I'm taking photos, think what works together and um, you know, is it good to have the sky in or is it, what, you know, what can I tone together well with the ocean if I'm taking some seascapes? I, I realized that what works really well is when you have an analogous colors, so colors that are close together in the color wheel um, that complement each other really well, or colors that are opposite on the color wheel. And what I wanna do is, is talk to you about some of the photos, but then really talk about how I edited this, this photo. So first of all, let's just have a look at a couple of photos. So, so this one here is a land that time forgot. It's a, one of my favorite photos I took a year and so ago of Iceland, um, Vesterhorn in, in Iceland. It's just a beautiful location. And what you can see here is it's predominantly sort of an orangey yellow color, um, maybe a little bit browns in it. And then black and white really. So it, it's sort of duo tone in, in its look. Um, you know, there's another shot here that I took of these sheep. Again, there's not a lot of color in there. Uh, and the, the, the color that there is complements each other. So the color in the sheep complements the color in the trees. Again, this shot here is a shot that I took of this you know, gorgeous lake and um, Bleetarn in, in the Lake District. And you can see that it's predominantly greens. This shot here has got a, 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 a little bit um, of yellows and greens, but again, those colors are really close together on the color wheel. And what I think is that when you use those colors and you use them correctly, then you can create a very painterly look. And it, it, it's sort of my style of photography. I, I like the way that that looks. And then the other types of shots that I, I have are like this, where I, I may have used colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So, you know, we've got this beautiful sea and then and then the land which is more of a brownie orange and these are opposite colors on the on the color wheel which also give this simplistic look because i've only got two colors in the image and when i look at all my photos it tends to be like that i'll i'll, I'll have colors that are really close together or if they are different they'll be opposite on the color wheel um, and then i won't have any other colors in the shot and i think that helps to create a very pleasing image but then I got thinking and I thought, I wonder if landscape artists do this as well. And my favorite artists are Turner, Gainsborough, um, Frederick. So I looked at some of their photos and what I found was that, that when they painted their photos, you know, they were really careful, obviously, about the, the palettes that they use in their photos. And they use a bit of artistic interpretation. Obviously, when you're painting something, you're creating something from scratch but their skies and their light tones in their images and their shadows in their images tend to be toned in a certain way. And that was really interesting to me because that's what I do when I'm using Lightroom. I, I'll tend to tone the shadows a little bit or tone the highlights a little bit or use a luminosity mask just to change the color balance of the highlights or, or the shadows. There's different ways that I'll show you how, how to do it. But by actually just toning these things together looks really good 
and it does give your images this sort of painterly look. Um, now, obviously, I don't want my photos to look like a painting. I don't want them to have brush strokes on. That's not what I'm talking about. I want them to look like a photograph, but I quite like that pleasing, simplistic look of, of, of the sort of 18th and um, 19th century artists. So who's noticed I'm not wearing a cap yet? I've actually got a package here, which I, I just came through the post this morning I'm gonna open. Um, it's not a new cap, but it's sort of, uh, some sort of headgear, you'll see, you'll see. Anyway, let's have a look at this photo, so this one here, and we'll, we'll go back to the beginning and I'll, I'll go through how I edited it. So I'm gonna do some of these things fairly quickly. You know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail in each of these tools. I'm just gonna show you my process of going through this. So if you wanna know a little bit more about this, then you can probably look back at some of my other Lightroom videos where I might have gone into these individual tools. Or um, if you haven't got it already, a bit of a plug for my masterclass, which I go into these tools in a lot more detail. Um, and you'll find a link below. Okay, so. So this is the image that I took. Now, obviously, um, you know, I, I was helped a little bit by a bit of fog in this image. You can see that already goes back into the distance here um, and there is fade into the distance. So the first thing I'll probably do is just crop it a little bit. So I'm just gonna go and crop that bottom off and I might just crop out that little branch at the top there off. And I might do another crop later, but for now I'm, I'm just gonna crop it there. Then what I wanna do is just start from the top and, and go down really. So what I'm gonna do here is first of all, just play around with the white balance. So I probably wanna make it a little bit warmer and maybe just add in some green. Now, I think I've made this too warm now, the, the actual tree trunk, but I'm, I'm liking the greens a little bit better. I wanna increase the exposure globally. I wanna increase the contrast. Now it's gonna look a bit weird to begin with. Um, Cause that's now, when you increase contrast, you're increasing saturation as well. So I might then go back and just cool it down a little bit. Um, now this tree trunk's not looking good. So I might have to do something separate to this tree trunk. I, I want to increase the shadows. So I'll go and increase the shadows there and probably the blacks as well. So, you know, I want it to look quite light and you know, like it was on that morning. So I'm going to increase the blacks slightly and then probably just reduce the clarity to just I don't want to I don't want it to look like that it's going to look really really poor so I just want to reduce the clarity a little bit and then I'll probably just reduce the saturation of globally a little bit as well which I tend to do and then add in saturation on a color basis um, because this is all about color this image it's you know the the the, the tones in the, in the image are, are what makes the final image I feel so I'm not gonna look at the tone curve at the moment. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on what I think for that, that image. I don't think I need to for this particular image. So then I'm gonna to go to the HSL slider, which is changing the hue of each individual color, the saturation and the luminance. Now, I'll probably have a play with this and then it's a bit of an iterative process going backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna play with all these and see what they do. So that doesn't do much. Um, the orange changes the orange of the, 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 the leaves at the bottom, so I'm gonna, I want those to look a little bit more brown, um, but I don't want to go too far away from the, 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 the sort of look of the, of the greens as well. Um, I'm gonna reduce the yellows probably. Yeah. So, so the yellows is changing the color of the, you can see what that's doing. It's changing the color of all the wood in, in the image really. So I probably want to reduce that because I want to pull out some of those orangey yellow tones in the branch here. Then on the greens, I don't want it to look like that. And I don't want it to look like that. In fact, the green's probably not far off. I don't want to change that too much. So then in terms of saturations, I probably want to just bring out some of those oranges, a little bit more of the leaves. And I don't think I want to change the saturation too much of anything else. And then it's just the luminance then, I just want to pull up the luminance of the leaves and then maybe just the luminance of that branch there. So this branch down here, which I think 
looks really good now. So if I just compare that to before and after, you can see that I've just sort of brought it out a little bit and flattened the image a little bit as well, which I think looks really good in these sort of fog foggy woodland images. So now I'm just, I'm still not happy with this bark. I just want to pull out a little bit more of those oranges. So I think to do that, um, before I go to the split tone in, I might just, now you can do this one or two ways. I could just brush in an adjustment layer on there, or I could do something simpler and just do a, um, an adjustment layer like that. So this is just affecting that area. So mostly the tree trunk. And then I can use a range mask. So I can send say a color range mask and I can just select the colors that I want to change, which are the colors of this bark here. So I'm just gonna select that bark. And then um, if I just hold over that now, I can then just reduce that down a little bit. So it's just changing this bark. So then just to see if it's what, what it's changing, you can just like change the exposure. So that's still changing far too much in the image. So I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit more. That's probably not far off. Now, what I want to do is just change the tones of that. I just want to bring out, I'm just going to bring out some of the, the browns of that. So I'm going to change the tint slightly, just make it a little bit more purpley, which will bring out some of the browns in that. It's super subtle, this. So I've just brought out just a little bit of those sort of browns and golden colors really in, in, in this tree trunk, which you, you can see now. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. I think that looks good. I'll probably go and tweak it a little bit more. Um, so then when I've done that, and you can do that in multiple ways, you could do it with a, a, a brush as well and, and just paint it on. So then what I want to do is look at toning. I'm probably also gonna bring out some of, the, some of this area here, but if I go and tone it, so split toning, basically is a way of toning, so coloring the highlights or the shadows of your image. So if I just do it to its maximum, if I go and split tone, I could make all the highlights blue by doing that, and that obviously looks horrible. But what I want to do is bring out some of the sort of warmth of the morning. So I'm gonna go around about here so I want the sort of yellows and the greens, and I'm gonna just increase that a little bit. What you can see now is that when I've done that split tone and it's also changed this tree trunk, so I might have to go back to that tree trunk and change it back a little bit. So I'm quite happy with that. And then what I could do is in the shadow area, I could go and just tone it slightly blue. Now, higher up you go, the more saturated it is. I don't want to go that far, but I just want to bring out some of that blue again in the shadow area. Um, and I tend to do that. So my shadows tend to be toned a little bit blue and my highlights tend to be toned a little bit yellowy, orangey, greeny, depending on the image. Now I don't do this on every image, but I, I, I feel that that's starting to look a little bit better. But I feel that this, I've lost some of those orangey tones now um, in this tree trunk. So I might then go back Back to my graduated filter here. I, I just want to just then tweak it a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring back some of those sort of nice sort of golden tones in that tree trunk. So it just feels like it's getting that warm light on, on, the, on the tree trunk there, which I think looks, looks really pleasing. So that's looking a lot better. So the, 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 the next thing that I, I want to do with this is just look at this area here because I feel that I can I can make it slightly softer in, in this particular area and probably bring out again some more oranges in here. So I can just put a radial filter here and then if I just invert it and hover over it, you can see it's gonna affect this area. I might just wanna increase the feather a little bit. And then in this area, what I might want to do is just increase the exposure, maybe reduce the highlights a little bit. And I'm just going to warm that up. So I just want to warm up that area down there and just add that to be slightly greener. So there we go. So I've added that warmth in, in, in that highlight area there just to, just to, just to create a, a, 
the feeling that I had when I was there on the morning really, which was this sort of really calm, warm sun coming through the fog that was being burnt off. So I had another radial filter, but this time I'm just going to do it as a vignette really. So, so what I want to do is put that radial filter on and you can see it's just gonna affect everything around here. And then I can just maybe just reduce the exposure a little bit um, and the shadows. I quite like doing vignette with the shadows sometimes because it's a softer vignette. It doesn't, it doesn't darken it down too much, but it still brings your eye into the image. So that's good. And then I'll probably go back to the HSL slider and play around with the saturation of some of the colors. So I'm gonna bring out some of the yellow a little bit and maybe just dampen down the saturation of the green a little bit. I want to create, I want to create this sort of warm look. And then I'm just gonna change the tone of the green and yellow. So, I might spend a little bit of time playing around with that. I'll probably go and make a cup of tea, have an apple, and then come back to it and then tweak it a little bit. Because it, it's, it's difficult to actually get it right first time. You, you, you'll, you'll get a much better result if you actually just go away, maybe for a day or two, and then come back to it and then tweak it again. Then maybe go away and then come back to it and tweak it again. So that was one I just did now. This one is the one that I'd spent a lot of days on. So let's see how different they are. Um, so this is the one, well, not actually that much. This one's probably got a slightly more orangey, um, yellow trunk to it than the one that I just did now, but they're fairly similar. Now, the one thing you will see that's different is that I removed, um, this sign here. Now, I'm not gonna go into how I did that in this video, because otherwise it'll just get st stupidly long, um, but I will do that um, in, in a separate photographer's toolkit video, I think, um, where I'll just do a small thing about how I remove things. I did that in Photoshop um, using the Content Aware Fill, fill Tool. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of debate on the comments in the last one about whether I should remove it or not remove it. I feel, personally, that it looks better without it because I think it draws the eye too much. Now, I realize that I've removed something that was there in reality, but I'm quite happy with that. I, I, I feel fine about that. It is art after all, and, and often I remove sticks or branches that maybe just don't look quite right. I don't remove huge things, but that's probably about as big as, uh, as, big as I go. And I never add anything into my images, ever. So I never add things into my images, but if I remove something that I think is distracting, then I think that adds to the whole look of it. So there we go. We've got that image now, which I think looks really, really pleasing. I was really pleased with it. And the actual print of it looks fantastic. So much so that I'm gonna add this now, um, and I've not added any portfolio prints to, to my website in, in a long time. I am gonna refresh the whole website shortly. That's my, that's my next project, um, and I'll be adding a few new ones. But I wanted to add this now because I'm talking about it. So I'm gonna add this as a limited edition um, print in a three size, which is this size here, and a two size to my website. So if you want one of those, they are gonna be limited editions and you can click the link below and um, order them. And I'd really appreciate that. You know, it, I feel that it's the best way to support my channel because I think you get something out of it in terms of a bit of my art. And I feel great because somebody's got, got my photos hanging on the wall, which I think is just one of the best things. So thanks ever so much for that if you, if you do get one. Okay, before I go, Let's open this package. So this, this is exciting. So this is a new hat from my um, favorite hat manufacturer in, in, the, in, in the Lake District. Now I say manufacturer, uh, it's a lady that I don't think she's got a huge team and she produces the most amazing wool hats from, from sheep in the Lake District. So. I've not tried this on. It's got amazing packaging as well. It's called Guile and Crag. They don't sponsor me for this video at all. I just like supporting small companies. Um, so I'm going to open this up. This is going to not. This is going to be a big fail now, isn't it? Sometime later. 
Okay, here we go. Right. Ooh, excited. Oh, this is looking good. Oh, this is looking so good. And the, the, this bobble here is made from Herdwick sheep. If, you, if you've never seen Herdwick sheep, in fact, Herdwick sheep are these type of sheep here, and they're just the cutest type of sheep. So, there we go. Expect to see a lot of this hat in the next videos. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, or maybe Thursday, thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.